Welcome back. President Biden formally rejecting House Republicans' invitation for him to testify in the impeachment inquiry. The White House lawyer telling the Oversight Committee, quote, the purported impeachment inquiry has succeeded only in turning up abundant evidence that, in fact, the president has done nothing wrong. Accordingly, we decline your invitation for President Biden to testify. Impeachment investigators hope to ask Biden directly why he, his family, and his family's business associates received more than $24 million from foreign sources. The committee says they have identified no legitimate services to merit such lucrative payments. Joining me now is Kentucky Congressman James Comer. He is the chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. Your reaction to Joe Biden declining your invitation, where does this go next? I've got your letter here that you sent to the president, and in it you go through all of the details and the evidence that you have come up with uh, in this investigation, and yet the president says he did nothing wrong, he's not going to testify. Now what? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the White House continues to lie about Joe Biden's knowledge of, involvement in, and participation with his family in their shady influence peddling schemes. We've proven through this investigation that the Bidens have been influence peddling for decades. We know that China, our biggest adversary, uh, paid the Bidens $9 million for absolutely nothing. Tony Bobulinski testified under oath that that $9 million was, in fact, a bribe from the Chinese government to the Biden family. So I'm not surprised that Joe Biden doesn't want to come and set the record straight to the American people. Now, he wants to continue to hide behind the liberal mainstream media that are going to continue to run cover and try to indoctrinate the American people uh, that there's no evidence when, in fact, we have bank statements, emails, text messages, and sworn testimony, including from three Biden family associates who all testified that Joe Biden was the central figure in the Biden influence peddling schemes. Well, I mean, we're all trying to understand why anyone would do some of the policy changes that Joe Biden has yep. engaged in, uh, in effect, making our country less safe and making America vulnerable. For example, the wide open border, where thousands of pounds of fentanyl are flowing. And now, in the most recent numbers, 24,000 Chinese nationals have been apprehended yep. at the border. They're going largely to California. Uh, why Joe Biden is not holding China account. We've got a new report here that tells us that the CCP is working with the Mexican cartels to transmit and distribute fentanyl to American citizens to kill American citizens. 100,000 of those have actually worked and are dead right now. So uh, do you believe that this is part of Biden's doing this because he's getting paid? I mean, we, we don't understand why Joe Biden would leave the border open the way he is. Well, it certainly appears Joe Biden's compromised. Uh, th this uh, being compromised is probably a result of the $9 million his family took from China, which, according to the IRS whistleblowers, they never paid a penny of taxes on. If it could be even any worse than taking money from the Chinese government, not paying a penny of federal taxes probably would uh, be the icing on the cake. But at the end of the day, uh, this administration has a China first, America last policy. Uh, we're holding a committee hearing today, an oversight, uh, to try to start rattling the cages of the government uh, leaders uh, of the Biden administration, the cabinet secretaries, the division directors, uh, to make sure that they understand the threat that China poses and the fact that the Biden administration doesn't have a China policy to thwart the, the problems that China is inflicting on everyday Americans uh, on a daily basis. When, yeah. when, you, when you look at the, the fentanyl crossing the border, the manipulation of their currency, uh, the, the propaganda campaign through TikTok and other outlets where they're trying to indoctrinate people in things like anti-Semitism and, and uh, in this left-wing Green New Deal type policies. We believe they're funding a lot of these NGOs that are leading the campaigns to try to uh, destroy our energy independence in America. The list goes on and on mm -hmm. and on, uh, and yet Joe Biden's asleep at the wheel. Well, tell me more about this new oversight hearing on the Chinese uh, Communist Party's efforts to infiltrate and influence the United States. Since October of last year, the numbers are 24,000 Chinese migrant encounters at the southern border. The majority of those crossings uh, at the border, rather, not the, not the Texas border, but the majority in California, 135 in Arizona, 91 in Texas, just four in New Mexico. Nearly all of the California crossings happening in the San Diego sector. Um, and, you know, 
you, you've done this investigation in phases. You wrote, wrote this in the mm -hmm. letter that the investigation yep. has proceeded in phases, beginning with a review of the SARS, the suspicious activity reports yep. of the Treasury. Uh, second phase was the subpoenaing of certain third-party accounts. But you are hitting brick walls because they're telling you this is not true. He did nothing wrong. So what's next? You told me a few weeks ago you were going to start sending criminal referrals out. How close mm -hmm. are you to that? Within weeks. And I, and I think that uh, what we had to do was give both Bidens an opportunity to come set the record straight. Uh, criminal referrals are very serious. I don't think that uh, there's ever in the history of Congress been criminal referrals to an immediate uh, president of the United States and their family. Uh, so we wanted to give the Bidens every opportunity. Uh, this is a fair and balanced investigation. Uh, we've uh, cited all of the concerns that we've had of wrongdoing with the Bidens with hard evidence in the form of bank statements, emails, text messages, sworn testimony. We've conducted this investigation by the book. We dotted every I and crossed every T. So we wanted to give the, the, the president an opportunity to testify. Even if he didn't want to testify, Maria, we tried to make it even easier. We sent him a list of questions to answer. Like, did he meet with this person who sent his family millions of dollars? Did he, uh, in fact, uh, know what his family was doing to receive uh, millions of dollars from our adversaries around the world? We gave him opportunity after opportunity to come before Congress uh, and, and set the record straight and clear the Biden name. Yeah. But they continue to refuse. They continue to hide behind the media. We've got a few more documents that we've subpoenaed that we expect in later this week. And I think you're going to see uh, this thing start to uh, wrap up very soon after that. Well, and, and wrap up means you're sending criminal referrals. Criminal referrals. And look, impeachment's still on the table. I think that it's very clear that the Bidens, uh, that, the, that Joe Biden has committed impeachable offenses. I don't think Americans are okay with uh, the president of the United States, yeah. whether he was vice president or president, selling access to China, yeah. Russia, Ukraine, and our adversaries around the world. And I think the American people want to see some accountability here, and I certainly do. Well, uh, we've proven they were influence peddling. Now it's time to hold people accountable for wrongdoing. Let, let's face it. If you have a different speaker in place, and if it's Hakeem Jeffries as the speaker of the House, all of this goes away. We know that. Right. He's not going to allow any of this to go forward. So how much does the drama within the House, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Thomas Massey trying to take down Mike Johnson, how, mm -hmm. how much of this drama uh, do you believe, is, is it undermining your investigation? I've dealt with drama from day one, uh, from the first three weeks of, of opening of the opening 118th Congress when you know we had people that wouldn't support McCarthy to be speaker. Then we went through the three and a half weeks when right. they removed McCarthy from speaker. Now we're going through this. Uh, the drama has been a challenge. I'm not going to lie, Maria. Uh, and, and it's very disappointing. We have people in our conference that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, there are a lot of people in our conference that have, have made a difficult situation even more difficult. But at the end of the day, I think we've we finally provided the American people with the truth, and now we're going to uh, uh, issue uh, referrals uh, to the Department of Justice. If this Department of Justice won't uh, do their job and hold people accountable for wrongdoing, then hopefully the next Department of Justice will, because the investigation will be completed. The work has been done. This has been a thorough, credible, substantive investigation. Now it's time to hold people accountable. I'm hopeful this Department of Justice will. If they don't, then the next one hopefully will. All right. We will leave it there. Mr. Chairman, we'll be watching your work for sure. Thanks very much for being here Thank this you. morning.